Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to film a quick intro because I started reading the first author I wanted to try this year, Victor Laval. I started listening to the audiobook of The Changeling and I'm very excited to discuss this book with you. It has won a lot of awards, got great reviews, so I'm very intrigued to see how I like it. I can't really tell you a lot about this. I think this is a book about missing fathers, about being black in the US, um, the uh, African diaspora in the US. So I'm very intrigued to read this book, but I will talk more about the actual plot when I give you my first update. And the way this works is that I will update you after 25% of the book, then when I'm halfway through, 75% through and then when I finished it you'll get my complete thoughts on this book. I love doing these vlogs just because I have time to really talk about a book and I hope this one will be a great one and I'll update you as soon as we hit the 25% mark. But let me just say the first chapter was amazing. Like if you take the first chapter and make it a short story, that would have been five out of five stars for me. The beginning was glorious, so I hope we will continue on on that route. So I am now over 25% into The Changeling and it is time for my first real update. Now, I will talk about this book up until the 25% mark for now, because after that, there is a big change. So I think I should really talk about that first quarter on its own and not like the little bit more that I've read now. In this story, we are following kind of um, fathers. <laughs> so we have um, our central character of Apollo, and we start out with the story of his parents. So his father, who was white, and his mother, who was black and from Africa. So she kind of moved from, um, I think, Uganda, I'm not quite sure, to uh, the United States and met this white man. And we learn their story first. And then we go into Apollo's life. So we see his growing up, the kind of teenager he was, the way that his family history affects him. Because his father left when he was four years old. He just disappeared, like outright just went away. And then when he was 12, he's home alone and someone's knocking at the door and they leave a parcel with all of these like memorabilia and so uh, he thinks that that was his father leaving the box but we don't actually have a confirmation for that and then we see him grow up into a man meeting a woman he falls in love with and then we get their kind of love story and the whole point is kind of to lead up to this moment when Apollo himself becomes a father of a son. And that's what we get in this first quarter. So this does not feel like horror at all or thriller or anything like that. It's more of a very gently told family history and a love story. I felt like the beginning felt actually very romantic and lovely, even though um, it doesn't shy away from showing problems, but it just really captures that hopefulness when you find someone that you want to spend at least a significant amount of time uh, of your life with. So that's what we get in this first part and I absolutely loved it. I love the writing. The way the story is told is just fantastic. I absolutely love it. And we do have this like, I don't know, it's not like a sense of dread, but there are like things going wrong. So it's not like this perfect pink um, story of, of their marriage and uh, the birth of their child and stuff. But I still think it is told in a way that makes it feel romantic and full of love. 
and I really enjoyed that as a setup to then kind of wreak havoc with that. And I would say if you don't like reading about babies, then this is probably a little bit of a struggle to get through because we do get a lot of like diaper changes and breast pumping. So if you're a little bit squeamish about those things, I think this first quarter is probably a little bit of a struggle. I'm not the biggest fan of those things, but I kind of overlooked it. You know, I'm interested in the story. So I was like, okay, we can do another diaper change. It's all right. <laughs> so um, just to keep that in mind. And I think this also isn't a great book if you've just given birth, especially as a mother, because this also deals with themes of postpartum depression. And I think this is kind of what leads into the darker things that will go on now. Um, but because of that, I, I wouldn't recommend this book to someone who just had a baby or like in the last year had a baby or something like that. I don't think then you should really read this one. Um, it might do weird things to your brain and you really don't need that if you just had a baby. Like your brain is doing fine, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. So we are teetering at the brink of everything kind of falling apart when we reach the first, uh, the end of the first quarter. And I really like that Victor Laval is taking the time to set this up because that leads to us kind of feeling for this romance, this family, the love that this man has for his child. We get to see all of that and then also his history and then the history also of her wife's family that we get in a kind of like flashback where her bigger sister tells her about something she doesn't quite remember from their childhood. So we do get this like very round picture of who these people are and how much they love each other. And I love that. I think it's great. But as I said, when you start this book, you're really like, is this a horror? And you know, we'll get to that. I'm pretty sure we'll get to that now. So that's all I want to say for now. And I will update you once I'm halfway through, which I'm very intrigued for that, for that next part now. So I'm now halfway through The Changeling and I thought I should give you an update. Now last time we spoke I had said that right at the 25% mark the tone of the book changes quite drastically and I would say that we do have another change in tone in this second quarter. So the first bit of that is very dramatic, like you start out with a bang. There is um, something very horrible happening to our main character. And because we took that time to focus on the like normality, almost like the romance of that life, we then feel what this dramatic event does to our character. And so after that initial shock, we do have a little bit of a time jump, which absolutely makes sense for the story because also for the main character, it seems like that time is just lost. It's kind of disappeared. And so then we are back with our main character in a very desolate place. Like things have taken such a turn for the worse. And so... It gets very dark, very gritty, very desolate, as I said. And then we do get the introduction of a new character. And this character also offers kind of like a new tone, a new perspective. And with that, it now turns more to kind of a mystery aspect. So the question then is more of like, what actually happened, like what was this event? Like we saw it happen, but our ma main character doesn't really understand what happens. And so now we do have more of that like mystery thriller feel 
where our main character is just trying to find answers. And so I think it is very interesting to go through these different phases of the book and still feel that it is one book. Like it absolutely makes sense, but you just get so much because what our main character is going through is so much. So I'm really, really enjoying that. I definitely suffered with the character in those first chapters of that second quarter. It was definitely heartbreaking and I think that you can really see how his actions make sense in the world that doesn't make sense to him anymore. And so I really, really enjoyed it still. I think it is still fascinating. I'm always excited to keep listening to the audiobook. It is read by the author. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but I think that also gives it a certain gravitas. So it definitely feels like the author himself is reading it in a way. It means that the individual voices aren't done like super well, I would say, compared to like very professional narrators, but I don't mind that. I think that this sincerity you get with the way it is read m more than makes up for it. So I'm having a great time, even though um, it is hard to say you enjoy a story like this because it is so heartbreaking and soul shattering, but I'm definitely intrigued to see where it goes from here. And we are right at the cusp of something again now at the halfway point. So I'm intrigued to see which kind of answers we will find. There's definitely some hints what is going on, but also up until this point, it is very unclear very uh, whether it is um, supernatural or not. And I have a feeling that it will not be, but it could still be, like it is still open. And I like that, I really enjoy that. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see what the third quarter brings. But as I said, I'm, I'm very excited to keep reading and I'll update you as soon as I'm 75% through the book. So I'm now 75% through the changeling. I'm in the last quarter now and starting with this last quarter we are entering the woods without saying anything else about what that might mean but we're definitely getting into the into the grid of things now. If you know fairy tales you know that entering the woods is always at your own risk so I'm very excited to read the last quarter. But in this third quarter, we do have quite a lot happening, to be honest. There is quite a bit of moving around in the city. And I think if you actually know New York, this is probably more exciting. For me, I obviously know the names like Queens and Manhattan, and I know that there's islands and stuff, but I don't have like an image of it. I've never been there. So to me, it's basically words and some things I've seen on TV. But I think if you've actually been to New York before, it's probably even more exciting to see where the characters are going and kind of track their progress and stuff like that. And we also get a lot of revelations and the main, point of this book is that you just don't know who you can trust. And I really like that. I think that there is like this, this plot going on and with the main character we're kind of trying to figure it out. And so I think having some untrustworthy allies is really a great way to just make everything a little bit more interesting. So I really, really like that. Uh, we also get this like new community that we see. And with this one, I feel like the answers weren't quite enough for me. So I hope that when we wrap up the overall plot, we will also get some more answers to that community. I can't really say anything else without going into spoilers, but I just felt like we spend quite a bit of time with them, 
but we don't really learn a lot about them. So that was a bit not disappointing, but I expected to gain some more answers from that section. So we'll absolutely see. I'm still loving it. I still think that the writing is phenomenal, very like capturing my attention. I'm always happy to keep reading and that's the best thing about an audiobook. So I think that this third quarter was my least favorite part of the book, but I do have that quite often because, you know, in the third quarter, you're kind of setting up the big finale. And so you have to put like things into place and that's not always my favorite part. So I'm very excited to get to the end now. I'm actually already a little bit of my way into the last quarter now. So we'll see where that goes. And I'll let you know my final thoughts when I finish the book. So last night I finished The Changeling by Victor Laval and I am here to give you the final update. Now this book is hard for me to judge because I loved the beginning so much, but then it kind of lost me towards the ending a little bit. I feel like the beginning really tried to say something, but then the ending, I just, I don't know how it was supposed to come together and to connect. I feel like we have these weird things that we went through with the main character that just remain kind of... Uh, not unexplained, but also they don't really make a lot of sense to me personally. Overall, I was like debating between a 4 and a 4.5 stars. I think I'm leaning towards the 4.5 stars because the beginning was so strong, but whenever a book ends weaker, it's hard for me to do that because um, that's kind of what's stuck in my mind now. Not the amazing beginning, but then the kind of like fizzling out at the end. <laughs> so that's always a little bit frustrating, but Overall, I would recommend this book. I think that especially the beginning is so strong and has a lot to say. I would also say don't expect like too much horror. I think that, as I said, the beginning is much more like romance family drama. And then we get into some more horrific things that might also have supernatural causes. But... I never felt like like scary horror to me at least. I feel like uh, it's more, it gets a little bit gross. The people are kind of shitty, so I don't know. Uh, so I just wouldn't expect too much horror out of this book, I guess. But yeah, overall, I still really enjoyed it. I think that I will definitely read more Victor Laval. And I am glad that I gave this book a chance, even though Kind of like the things I was hesitant about with this book are also the things that kind of uh, lost me throughout the book. So my like gut feeling that this topic just might not be for me was correct, but that's not the book's fault, you know? So as I said, overall would definitely recommend, really enjoyed it. I don't think I can say much more about this in a spoiler-free way. Let me just say that <laughs> listening to this, I was so happy that all of my laptops that I'm using, like my private one and my work one, they both have those little things where you can uh, close the camera. <laughs> you know, um, I feel like all newer laptops have that now. And when you read this story, you're really thankful for that and you will remember to use it as well. Um, so that's maybe a little bit of a hint what's going on. Um, without spoiling too much. Really liked it and I think I want to go into a couple of spoilers for people who have read the book to just explain a little bit more why this wasn't my favorite. But if you have not read the book, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. You can leave me a comment letting me know whether you're now more or less intrigued to read the book yourself and I will talk to you soon. And for all of the other people who want to see more of a spoilery discussion, here we are. Spoilers 
I had. I think that what didn't really work for me, for one was the troll thing. Now I kind of liked that this was not a Faye story because with Changeling my interpretation was like Faye and I don't like Faye. <laughs> I just, I, I'm not interested in them. I'm sorry. Like I'm one of those weird people who, did, who do not give a damn about fairies. So I was happy that it wasn't that, but then trolls also fall into a similar category of mythology for me. That's just not something I'm really interested in. So we do have this kind of like, you know, like in The Hobbit, this kind of troll, um, which I like. I like it in The Hobbit, but there it's not like the end game, <laughs> I guess. Um, and obviously here the trolls also not I don't know, it's hard to hard to say who the like real evil is in this plot, but I feel like there I wanted to have a bit more, you know? But um, still it was really hard for me to not think of those like modern trolls from those like weird movies where they all have like mohawk haircuts and hate metal music or whatever, like those those funky trolls. That's just what happens in my head when I hear the word. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't the biggest fan of that as the supernatural element. I must say that uh, even though I said it's not like super horror, um, there are a couple of like sentences that I think stick in your head when you read the book. One is obviously it's not a baby, like that is like the whole the whole thing. But then the other sentence that for some reason like really stuck in my head was the big one can swim. <laughs> I don't know. It's just such a good sentence because it doesn't really tell you anything apart from there is a danger. I have not defined the danger at all. <laughs> so I think that aspect I really liked, but then the like in general plot thing I wasn't the biggest fan of. And then I don't know, like <sighs> there is this family of Norwegian people who know that daylight can defeat the troll and still they don't kill it for like decades, centuries. Why? Uh, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I like the like whole like we want power and we're like the white man that deserved this and so I'm gonna take it approach of the sun. But I did not understand the father. I don't know what was going on with him and why he never tried to kill the troll. Because obviously, like, if you have a monster that your ancestors brought with them when they came to that land and they have been feeding it for like years and years and decades and it doesn't really do you any good as the like evil guy, the kindergarten guy explains why is his logic not I'm just gonna kill it because it doesn't do us any good. Instead he's like I'm gonna bring it my own child to eat and then it will help me again. I don't know I just felt like it just felt like there were like holes in the explanation that I just did not understand. And similarly with the island, like we have that island of women whose children were stolen for the troll. And somehow they knew, we never find out how the women know. And so they get rid of the not baby. And then they go to this island and I just, again, I don't understand. Like. How does it work and why, if there is so many women, why do they not band together to try to stop this? Like, uh, I don't know. I wasn't the biggest fan of this, of this conclusion, I guess. I liked all the messages in between, like talking about how just sharing pictures of your child on the internet without any concern is like super dangerous, I get that. How we can all be spied on all the time, I get that. Like I really love those bits. I also love this whole discussion that we have with the new dads and how uh, yeah, a lot of people use this to 
get praise because they're doing the bare minimum now, like, good for you. There was a lot in this book that I really, really liked, but the supernatural part is what didn't work for me. And I think that's always the hardest part in a horror novel to make that work, to give all the horrible things that happened a true cause, a true origin. So I get it. It's not the biggest deal breaker for me if the ending doesn't work in a horror novel, but I was still a little bit sad because this could have been a five star. Like if it had stuck the landing, it would have been a five star for me. And so now it's more like a four point two five, whatever. So let me know what you thought. I would love to hear about that. I think that there is still like so much in this book to enjoy. So many twists and turns. The writing is amazing. Yeah, I really liked it. Let me know what you thought. And also let me know if you've read other books by Victor Laval, which one should I check out next? I would love to hear about that. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.